Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 6, Worksheet 0, and I'm going to go through some homework solutions with you today. These are going to be the odd solutions here, so beginning with number 1. We have 12 over 9 equals 4 over x. To solve this, what we want to do is first begin by cross multiplying. So this becomes 12 times x, or simply 12x. And we'll set that equal to, cross multiplying this way, 9 times 4, and 9 times 4 is 36. To get the x by itself, I know they're joined together by multiplication, so I will do the opposite, which is divide both sides by 12. 12 over 12 becomes a 1, so I'm left with just an x on this side, and 36 divided by 12 is going to be 3 for a solution of x equals 3. On number 3, we have again cross multiplying x times 28 becomes 28x, and set that equal to this side over here, which is 77 times 4. Now 77 times 4, probably it's just not rolling off your tongue there. Um, so we could take a look at it and say, well, let's just go ahead and do 77 times 4. And we could say 77 times 4, and it's going to be equal to 308. Okay, so that's one way we could do it. We could write it out like, like such. Okay, I could also, though, before I do that, I could recognize a couple things. I could multiply that out, but now I have a crazy number. I might recognize that 77 over 28, that 7 goes into both of those things there, right? So if I have 77 over 28, I could reduce this fraction from the very beginning. 7 goes into 11, or sorry, 7 goes into 77 11 times, and 7 goes into 28 4 times. So now I'm working with the problem much more like x over 4 equals 11 over 4. Now that's a little bit easier to work with. When I cross multiply, I have 4 times x, or 4x, equals 44. So both these problems so far were at the same exact point, but now I'm doing, I, over here I have 28x equals 308, here I have 4x equals 44. This is a lot easier for me to solve, and I haven't had to get out a calculator to figure out what 4 times 77 is going to be, right? So look for a way that you can reduce, okay? So could I do this? Yeah, I could do 28 and do 200, 308 divided by 28, but I'd have to use a calculator for that because I just don't know that, and I see the answer is going to be 11 x equals 11. But over here, if I notice, divide by 4, 44 divided by 4 is also x equals 11, and that's just a lot easier to see without a whole lot of compu extra computation. For number 5, again, same idea. Here we have m and 34 and 51 and 3. These are, some again, some large numbers. Is there a way to reduce that? 3, unfortunately, does not go into 34 because 3 times 11 is 33, so it's not going to work. So I'm going to cross-multiply. And as I cross multiply, I end up here with um, 34m, and I can set that equal to 3 times 51, okay? And 3 times 51 is 153. All right, now that's kind of a large number there, isn't it? But it is what it is, so I'm going to divide both sides by 34 to get the m by itself. So m is going to equal 153 divided by 34. Now, knowing what I know about 4 as an as a even number. Any number I multiply by 4 is going to give me another even number, so I'm not going to be able to get to a number with a 3. There's not going to be a whole number solution there, meaning 34 is going to go into 153 a certain number of times with a leftover. Okay, So if I think about just the, uh, if it was 3, 3 going into 15 goes in there about 5 times. Okay, So if I estimate this, I might say, well, it might be about 5 times. Well, if I said 34 goes 153 five times, five times four is 20, carry the two, five times three is 15, 16, 17, and I'm a little bit too large. So five is gonna be too large of an estimate, so I'm gonna drop it down by one and say that 34 goes into 153 four times, and four times four is 16, carry the one, four times three is 12, plus one more is 13. Now we subtract, so I have to borrow from here, make that a four, that becomes a 13. 13 minus 6 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1, and so I have 1 left over there. So I know that I have 4, okay, and I have 17, 34 is what it seems to look like right there, okay? So 4 and 17, 34. What's interesting about 17, 34 is that 17 over 34 is actually going to be a half. Okay, how do I know that? Well, just 17 times 2 is 34. So this reduces to 4 and a half as my actual solution for what m is going to be equal to, right? So if I went back to my initial 153 divided by 
34, I'm going to get 4.5, which is the same as 4.5, but this way I had to solve it out using fraction work there. So it depends on if you can use a calculator or not for how you want to solve that, but I went ahead and did it without a calculator so you could just see how that solution works out. Let's look at the back side again, still looking at the odd questions here. So we're going to begin by multiplying, cross multiplying here. So I set it up as 4 times x minus 2, and I'm going to put that in parentheses. And here I have 8 times negative 3. Positive times a negative is going to be a negative 24, and we'll start right there. Now I'm going to use distributed property to do 4 times x is 4x, and then 4 times minus 2 is minus 8, and make that equal to still negative 24. Let's move the integers to this side over here. And so we do the opposite. Instead of minus 8, we add 8 to make that go away. So 4x is what I'm left with over here is equal to negative 24 plus 8. Negative 24 plus 8 is like doing 24 minus 8 and keeping it negative. So we have a negative 16. Okay. So then I divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4 to get x equals negative 16 divided by 4 is a negative 4. And that becomes my answer for number 7. And finally, looking at number 9, okay, we have a negative in front of here. The thing with this negative is it's a negative 5, 6, right? So that negative has to be included with one of these numbers. If I included it with both, that'd be like a negative over a negative, and that actually makes a positive there, okay? So that's not going to quite work out. So I have to think that through just a little bit, okay? And so as I think that through just a little bit here, I'm going to go ahead and say, Let's put the negative with the 5, okay, and we'll keep the 6 positive. So I'm going to then cross multiply this to have negative 5 times b minus 12 and set that equal to 6 times b minus 1, okay? Now I can distribute and I have negative 5b and negative 5 times negative 12 is a positive 60 and set that equal to 6 times b is 6b and 6 times minus 1 is negative 6. I'm going to go ahead and add 5b to both sides, so I end up with a positive b. I just like a positive b better. Uh, my variable, if I keep my variable positive, I like that if I can. I'll add 6 for here and 6 to there, so I have 66 on this side. So then I'll divide both sides by 11, so that b equals 66 divided by 11, which is 6. And that's it for today's lesson. Hope that helps you out a little bit with the odd numbers, and do well in the rest of them. See you next time.